Welcome back everybody to the Meeple Marathon and our continued coverage of Warp's Edge. Uh, this is from Renegade Games and Scott Alms and this is part of their Solo Hero series so this is a solo only game. Uh, I've already featured an unboxing of the game on my channel but today I wanted to just show you guys how everything kind of fits back in the box. There is a built-in storage solution um, but it, it, it's kind of funky. And then we're going to go through a full playthrough of the game and see how we do. So just right off the bat here, let's just kind of show you how everything fits back in the box. So this is at least how I have decided it goes back in the box best. On the top here, I have the rule book, but I also have the uh, singularity uh, kind of mini choose your own adventure novel. I did... Um, read through this and we'll be using the, the setup that this determines. Um, essentially it does give you kind of a background to how the whole warps um, system works and you know kind of resetting the, the why you reset the minions and things like that. It explains all that so it's worth reading through once certainly but all it really does is choose your ship, your starting skill, and your boss for you. Um, so I may breeze through it another time just to kind of see what uh, various um, differences it gives me with like the ship and the skill and the boss. But for the most part, I probably want to make sure that, you know, I'm probably gonna say, ooh, I want to play this boss next and I want to make sure I play with this ship and, you know, the bosses increase in difficulty. So that's probably how I'll play them. But as far as a backstory is concerned for a board game, I thought this was a nice touch, but uh, certainly not something I'm going to read every time before I play the game. All right, so those two sit on top, and then here on top we have our bag. I, you know, keep the, not that you can really see down there, but I have these starting tokens, which are have this white border around them in the bag, and that's just where I keep them. And I also have, right now have the ship cards on, uh, you know, and these are nice thick cardboard, they're double-sided. The ship cards sitting up there and between the ship cards and the bag folded in half, um, it kind of nicely takes up half each. And so then underneath you have this included storage solution for the tokens. Now, I think this was a really nice touch by them. Um, the lids fit on there nicely everything stays inside there. Um, but remember these tabs. You can see there's a set of tabs here and a set of tabs here. When I did the unboxing, you may have noticed that these tabs, I guess, were keeping the cardboard uh, sheets tucked in tight and keeping everything nice and tucked in tight in storage. But now that I have unboxed the game, I don't understand why they're here. Because, you know, technically, yes, I can lift the lids out, but, you know, it's much easier to lift from the middle here. Um, and you do almost kind of have to lift the lids off first before you can get the, the full trays out. It's just there's no place to grab them. But now once the trays are off, it's pretty easy. Uh, if you just spin this around, you just kind of pinch like this and pull each one out. Um, <clears throat> just a quick opinion on these trays. They're okay. They're pretty flimsy, plastic. You know, there's basically a sticker on the top here. And on one of these, I think it's this one, the sticker is not lined up like, you know, amazingly well. So it, it kind of, I can get my lip underneath it. I keep trying to push it back down to make sure it doesn't peel up. But, you know, it, it, it's not a perfect system. But also, you know, you can fit all of the power tokens of each type in their own little sleeves. I wish they had figured out a way to make these wells a little bigger so they weren't so tight in there, but their solution was to store the ones that you're not using or store the power tokens, not in this tray, but instead in the bottom of the box here. And that just doesn't make sense because that's just asking for them to um, kind of uh, get kicked around. Another thing I just want you guys to notice is that the interior of the box here, uh, you can't see that, um, it gets a little scuffed up um, from these uh, trays pushing them back down. You know, they've got a little bit of a, a lip here that, that seems to catch. Anyways, um, so you'll notice that I have the boss cards sitting on top here and I just 
there's four of them, so I split them up two by two, turn them sideways like this, and they create a nice platform for those token trays to sit on. The reason I have these here is because you can't lay them sideways like this on top of the token trays because of these little tabs. Those little tabs get in the way and don't allow these to sit flat. So then you're forced to, to double them up, turn them like this, and then if you take these on top of these, on top of the instruction manuals and the bag, it pushes the uh, box lid up. So again, I really just don't know where they were going with all of this. It seems like they really didn't plan it out. What are those tabs for? Um, and so then you can see they expect you to store your power tokens in here and then just pull out the ones you need for your specific game. You can see that, say on the Achilles here, you would use those five power tokens here that are underneath the picture. Um, and then they expect you to leave the rest here in the game box and then store them in here. And you can see these wells are bigger and wider, but th there's no lid for this portion. So these tokens would just fly out all over the place. Instead, they do fit in here. I mean, and that's fine, it works. And I just make sure that, oh, if I'm not using the E up tokens and I need to flip them over, I just, you know, make sure that the three that are at the front are the three I can see and I pay attention to the tokens I'm pulling out. So anyways, um, I have all my cards over here and then these came with the expansion. So they just fit right there for right now. And these cubes, um, you know, bagged up. I don't know if I'm supposed to stick them over there. I guess I could. And I'm assuming this is where these tokens go, the little explosion tokens. But again, there's no lid for these. So um, they slide around a little bit more. But the way I have it all packed in there, they don't slide around too much. I do like that they have two wells here. Um, so if you wanted to sleeve your cards or separate them, you could do that. But again, they created this expansion and the expansion box is pretty flimsy, not something you're gonna keep. And it's like, well, what do I do with these? There's no spot for these. So not a whole lot of forward thinking um, with Renegade, but the included storage solution does work. Um, here, let me just show you how it might work. And this is what I did one time and I got close. So I stuck these down in one of these wells and that works. And then what I actually did was took my bag and folded my bag up, which I'm not a huge fan of because even folded up, it doesn't quite fit in there. You almost got to, and you want to make sure you don't uh, mush up your tokens in there. You almost got to fold it up into thirds, but I got it in there like this. All right. So I did that thinking, oh, maybe that's what you must do. Um, but I went ahead and again, you can't really put these in with the lids on them. You kind of have to, just like you can't take them out with the lids on, they don't really fit in well with the lids on. Um, so there you can see it popping up because of the bag. But anyways, so we've got these lids go on pretty well, even once they're in the box. So I will give them credit for that. But again, I don't understand what these tabs are for. So now you've got uh, all this thick cardboard that needs to go here. I would love to turn these sideways, but you can see they don't fit because of the tabs. They'll fit right here in the middle, but then that's not doing me any good because these need to go high or low. So they're just gonna sit in the middle like that. I don't want them to get bent up. And then I guess technically these fit on top. So I guess it does work like that. The lid's still gonna go back on the box. Um, do with it what you will. Um, I just thought that it was really weird that those tabs in the middle, um, you know, if they had been so wide that they would have held the boss cards in a nice, neat tuck, that would have made sense to me. Or just put them at one end and then in the middle so that it would have held the boss cards at the bottom and then I could have put the ship cards at the top. Anyways, now they're just going to kind of, you know, slide around back and forth in there like that. So again, it works, but uh, there's just some things about it I, I they just didn't seem to really think through. Um, but anyways... That's how the game stores. Again, this was all included. I didn't have to add anything. It came this way. I believe it'll come this way in retail. So let's take a look at how the game plays now. Okay, so we have the game all set up here. Um, the things that came about reading the uh, Singularity 
kind of choose your own adventure novel here was essentially the ship that I'm using, the um, skill that I'm starting with, and the um, boss card here that I'm going up against. So uh, it's not like I'm adding anything to the game, I'm not getting any bonus cards or anything like that. Normally you would draw two and choose one from this deck for your starting skill. And normally you would just get to choose the boss and the your your ship. So the reading through the rule book kind of just made those decisions for you. So that's how we landed here. This is essentially kind of the basic ship that they recommend. This, however, is not the um, basic uh, boss ship. So um, how you set up the game essentially is these you know token trays make it very easy to just get those out and and set them up and then you're going to build your enemy minion deck based on these numbers here so you can see four yellow four orange and four red and you're gonna you know shuffle up all the yellows deal four out set those off to the side shuffle up all the oranges set them off the side so this is stacked this deck currently is stacked so that all the reds are on the bottom, then all the yellows, I mean, then all the oranges, then all the yellows. So I am, being that I'm very uh, green here at the beginning, I'm going to be seeing the easiest people first. But after the first round, that's all going to change, and you'll see why. Um, but essentially, you build your minion deck according to the boss, so that's going to change. This is the, I basically have four total rounds to defeat this boss. And um, at the end of each warp, I'll advance this token. And if I have not defeated the boss by the end, then I lose. Um, and then, like I said before, normally you would shuffle up your skill deck, draw two, choose one, and that's it. Um, to build out your bag, you're always gonna have these tokens with the white borders around them. These are always your starting tokens, no matter what ship you start with. You can see, for example, here is a regular token or even a regular one token. You know, there's no white border around the edge. So that's how you know which starting tokens to put in your bag. And then you can see here on my ship, there are five tokens that spell out power here underneath it. And so these are the tokens that you're gonna have available during the game. So if at any point an enemy tells you you've earned a P token, you get to get this one. Or say a E token, you're gonna get to this one. And since this E is yellow on this ship, I actually get to start with one of these tokens in the bag already. And then I've got my health token here for my ship and my shield token. Um, if at any point in time my shields go down here into red, then I have to start taking hits on my <laughs> ship in general. There is no way to gain back this yellow column here. Once this goes down, there's no way to get it back up. But there are ways, like for example, spending energy for me to gain my shields back. But every time I take a hit to my shields, and only my shields, I actually have to remove a token from the game that is in my discard pile. So that is a way of, say, getting rid of single uh, lasers um, so that your threes come up more often. But at the same token, the less tokens you have in your bag, the harder it is to get through all of the minions and then to the boss. So let's just take a look at the boss here. Uh, this one is somewhat unique um, because he um, says some sections of the mothership have special powers instead of attacks. Just like normal attacks, these special powers are active on every turn unless the corresponding section has been stunned. This mothership has one section that can only be defeated by energy. This section cannot be stunned by energy, but can still be stunned by lasers and maneuvers. That's this section. And then this mothership can attack and be attacked every turn. So I can chip away at this guy actually throughout the course of a game and possibly put a damage, you know, focus on one arm or the center here and actually put a damage on him where normally you can't even touch the boss until you've gotten rid of all the minions. And then once you've cleared all the minions, then you can attack the boss and it takes you two or three warps even just to get to the bottom of this stack so you'll see how all that works here in a second um so let's just bring some cards out here and it's probably easiest for me to teach you how to play the game while i'm actually playing it so you always deal out four cards 
Um, if you have the expansion content that came available as part of the Kickstarter, there are some that will add a fifth card here to the row, but for the most part, you're always dealing out four cards and you always want to keep them uh, in order. So if you have the play mat, the play mat would be an excellent example of you know, keeping this in the one spot and even if, or, or say keeping this in the four spot and if I cleared out these two middle ones, you don't slide it down. You don't pinch them in. You always keep them and then fill back in because you'll see there are tokens, for example, this um, photon torpedo or something like that, what it's called, photon blast token actually sits in between two ships and can hit two ships at once. But if you're one and you're four, the only ones left, you cannot drop a P in between them and hit them both. So keeping them in their slots does matter throughout the game. So essentially you always deal out four um, minion chips and you draw five chits from your bag. And here is my nice um, stitched bag that came with the game and the rest of my chips are in the bottom there. And so now within this first round, this is essentially a single turn. So the turns always start with enemy arrivals. So I dealt out my enemy. Then we're gonna switch to pilot actions. So that's, I can use these tokens to take that action. Then after I've used these actions, then I will resolve enemy attacks and then I will draw five new tokens. If at any point I cannot draw five new tokens fresh from the bag, this round or this warp is over. Um, essentially, the thematic nature of it is that you have been floating around in space for quite some time. You're getting a little bit rusty as you're attacked by these enemy spaceships. You are eventually killed, but your onboard computer of your spaceship has this savior technology that can actually warp you back in time to the beginning of the battle and you can try again, knowing you know, you've learned some skills and you've, in this case, improved your bag. And so you're gonna play through all these again, hoping that you make it a little bit further next time. So we essentially have, you know, one, two, three savior modes, um, three warp backs before we really have to actually finish off the boss here. And in this scenario, we don't have to have dealt with all the minions first. So the way you deal with the minions is that you have to play down tokens from your hand to um, either defeat a ship with lasers or outmaneuver a ship to the point where they've lost you and they just bug out. Um, <clears throat> and you can see that each side that you choose gives you a different reward. So if you outmaneuver the ship, you're actually going to get a better reward. You're going to get a two cost laser added to your bag versus a one cost or a single laser. Um, and you can see how this guy takes three uh, lasers to kill it, whereas the rest of these are, you know, these two only take two. Um, if at any point in time you are able to, say, put a single maneuver or a single laser on a minion, that minion is stunned when it comes to the enemy attacks phase. So if I kept this as is for right now, these three enemies would be stunned, they would not be able to attack, and this would be the only one attacking me. I would simply then look at the bottom here. I would take one hit to my shields. I would also have to discard one token completely from the game, destroy it from the game essentially, that is in my discard pile, and um, you know, take one hit on my shields. If at any point in time I have added enough tokens, say I've done this here, to outmaneuver or blast a ship out of the sky, they are completely removed and not added back in until step one of the next turn. So obviously they're not gonna attack me if um, I have blown them out of the water and I immediately get their token uh, added to my bag. So that is how you essentially, because right now there's only, I believe, 11 tokens let me count here with my fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. So there's always 10 starting tokens, enough for two rounds, and then the one token you added in for your ship. So right off the bat, unless you want to play more than two turns your very first warp, you're going to have to add at least four more tokens into the bag in order to play then a third turn within warp one, if that makes sense. So constantly adding 
these to the bag is going to help you continue to play longer and longer per warp. Um, and they go into your bag when you gain them. They don't go into your hand or anything like that. You do, however, have uh, rewards like this one that has the three tokens. This is actually a draw three out of the bag bonus. So if I were to defeat this guy with lasers, I could immediately draw three tokens out of the bag, which would help me prolong this turn sequence. Um, but like I said before, with this specific... Um, boss, you're going to have to deal with him being active as, as well. Okay, so let's walk through this first round slowly here as if it was an actual game. And, um, you know, we need to take into account that repairing shields only increases your shield meter by one. Okay, I don't need to repair any shields right now. And this one says level one enemies require one extra laser to destroy or one extra maneuver to evade. Okay, so, um, and then this says some sections of the mothership, uh, just like normal attacks, these special powers are active every turn unless the corresponding section has been stunned. So I can, you know, this guy is gonna attack me Unless I stun him for two, these guys are all going to attack me. And right now, um, you know, my skill here is evade one enemy without gaining the evade reward. So that would be good as if I had an enemy that was tough to evade. But I still have to spend one evade token to activate this um, skill card. So um, this is definitely... You know an interesting enemy here and you can see that it's only difficulty two so this is really like the the second stage enemy and this is actually the first time i've played this one in particular so it's definitely something to think about because you really only have five tokens per turn so you're going to be having to deal with um you know uh, taking hits every round whereas normally i'm used to evading figuring out ways to evade everybody every round um, so what we can do here right off the bat is say, all right, I don't want to take two damage, um, from the mothership. So I'm going to stun him with lasers here. Um, I'm not going to worry about repairing my shield. So I'm not going to worry about this left arm. And then I'm also going to say level one enemies is so I'm going to stun this so that I can then take this guy out. It's going to give me a level one energy to my bag. So I will simply take this, add it to my bag, and this then goes to my discard pile. And this guy just goes up here. We're gonna bring him back later, but for right now we just stick him up there. And again, we don't shift anybody else around. Unfortunately, I have a whole lot of energy left, which I cannot use to attack any of these people. I could put it towards this arm, however, but I don't think I have six total even in my bag. So I did add one. Uh, and this would be, a, I guess, an added benefit to know exactly what's in your bag at the start of the game. But I'm kind of focusing on this arm right here. So what I'm going to do is, um, see, I can purchase another maneuver for two. Then this one's wasted. And I kind of want to lose this one because I'm going to be losing some tokens here in a minute um so maybe we'll do that maybe i'll hold on to these okay so strategically what i have done here is stunned these two sections i stunned this section specifically so i could take this guy out and then i stunned this section so i'm not taking two hits these guys now are each going to hit me for one so one two three on my shields that normally would require me to destroy three tokens, but I only actually have one token in my discard pile because I held these two. You can see here I have a hold um, indication of two. And also here at the bottom, you can see that with this ship, a single energy spent will recover two of my shields. So I can hold two tokens over from the to the next turn. And now, we're moving on to step four, pilot, 
plans, I'm going to draw five new tokens here. So at no point can you look into the bag, but you can always feel around in the bag and count out how many tokens you have left. All right, so there's five. Now, these two tokens stay with him, but we're going to push them to the top because they're no longer stunning him. This new turn, I have to re-stun everybody in order to uh, stay out of danger here. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. So again, I don't have any way, I guess I could hit him with a laser here, um, but I don't know if that's gonna help. So, what can we do here? Now see, this guy has three energy. He's actually gonna allow me to, um, I could defeat him with this three, and so I might very well do that. Um, let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. So I've hit this guy with three energy, and so I'm gonna gain an E token, which we know is one of the ones, so actually I have two of these in my bag now, because I know I haven't started with one yet. And this guy's gone, so these tokens are over here. And then, what else do I have here? Um, again, I cannot stun this guy with energy. Um, so I may say, okay, I'm going to purchase with two energy, a two cost laser. So this goes into my bag and let me just count around in here. I've got one, two, three, four. So I need at least one more token added to my bag in order to make it to the next round. So I actually don't want to attack this guy. I want to be able to attack one of these two guys. Um, and so what I can do here is take this guy out. All right, so you're done. This comes over here. I get a one cost energy added to my bag. All right, so I know I'm gonna be able to play one more turn. Then I can stun this guy Ooh, and I forgot, I still had this up here. So I actually, I needed to spend this token on this guy. Or, you know, technically I could do that. Uh, it's, it's really either way. Um, it really doesn't matter either way. So, all right. Um, I was hoping to have been able to stun this guy as well, but I forgot about this arm over here, making me take more. So again, this guy is stunned, he's not hitting me, but I am taking two more damage, so one, two, and I need to come up with two tokens to destroy here. So I'm actually gonna destroy those two. That's enemy attack step, so step four is pilot plans. I should have exactly five tokens in here. And I know what two of them are. There are these E tokens, and I'll explain those in a second here. So we are going to refill our enemy row here. This shifts up. And so now, unfortunately, I see that having put this here at the beginning was kind of a waste because I'm not going to get around to defeating this guy yet. So in the future, if I play this guy, I will want to just focus on the middle until I know I'm going to have four to evade or six to destroy over here. So what these E tokens do is give me the chance to either take um, either energy or lasers and upgrade any amount of tokens in my uh, pool to the next step. So unfortunately, these really don't do me any good towards hitting anyone, but the two tokens will allow me to take my energy and my lasers. I actually trade these back in, so I'm gonna get a two energy out of it and a three cost laser out of it. And so it's good for upgrading your tokens, thinning out your bag, but they don't help you at all with hitting these guys out here. Okay, so uh, you can see this guy cannot be stunned by lasers and he's hitting me for three. He's an orange one, which means he's a, a level two fighter. So I definitely wanna hit stun him with a maneuver here. Um, now, I don't have any tokens in my bag for me to draw, so me taking this guy out wouldn't do any good. Um, I could, I'll probably use this to buy something. 
Um, so let's get another two cost laser out here. And then this unfortunately is only gonna be good to stun someone. So the question is, do I stun this guy or this guy? Uh, it really doesn't matter. And I'll tell you why in a second here. So I'll stun this guy. And <clears throat> um, now I'm going to be hit one, two, three, four times. So one, two, three, four. I'm actually down to a single point of health here. This is not a very good um, example of how to play the game well. Um, and now at this point, we have, I am out of tokens. So in step four, I cannot draw five new tokens. So what's actually going to happen is, is that all of this stuff is going to come back. These destroyed ones stay off to the side, but these are gonna go all back into my bag. All right. These guys who we've all seen are all gonna be added to the ones I've defeated and these are going to be shuffled up briefly and added back on top of what we haven't seen. So there's a chance I could get some oranges right off the bat. Um, you know, I mixed that up, so I'm not really even sure what's going to happen here. Um, all right. We move our warp symbol. Um, and we essentially start back over. So we can get out our four new... Hard. So there you can see there's an orange one. All right, so not too bad. And draw up our five new tokens. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, and I forgot, you also get to add a skill. So you're going to take the top two skill cards. And you're going to get to take a look at them. Choose one token from your pool and remove it from the game. Gain one token from the supply. Or move an enemy from the row to the bottom of the deck. Um, so I think I'm going to go with the palm device simply because it is a little bit easier to activate. This card goes to the bottom and that's it. We are ready to start warp two. Um, all right. So again, here I have this where I can either upgrade, uh, these two here or, uh, these two. Oh man. And I definitely need some shields recovered here. One, two, three, four, five shields. Um, so really spending like this twofer here would help. Uh, so let's upgrade our lasers, I guess. Um, set those off to the side because they are starting tokens. All right, so I've upgraded my lasers. Now at this point, I definitely need to spend this to get some shields back. So this is gonna go up to four. Now, unfortunately though, I have left myself woefully short here in order to stun someone. Now I can use this to stun this guy because he uses energy to defeat him. I can say, use this to go after that guy. And now, unfortunately, this is only gonna be able to be used to stun someone so who do I want to stun? Um, probably, let's just say this guy. All right, so in looking at the enemy phase, everybody else is stunned. These can all shift up here, um, but these two guys are actually hitting me. So I'm gonna take one, two hits of damage, and I'm gonna have to discard these two tokens right there. Remove them from the game. All right, moving on to turn two. One, two, three, four, five. Um, let's see here. What can we do to stun this guy? So, now the reason I put this over here versus, say, one of these two is that I'm going to take this and I'm going to stun this arm, which means level one enemies no longer require one extra laser to destroy. So this guy is actually now destroyed. And I'm going to get a level one energy added to my bag. All right, um, let's do this. So I've stunned the middle section and he's actually a five. That's gonna allow me to defeat this guy because my arm is no longer active here. So this guy's been defeated. I get to draw three tokens. 
And I actually only have four tokens left in the bag here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so I think the obvious choice for this is to upgrade all of these. And this one becomes a three for here. Okay. Um, and hmm, I can straight outmaneuver this guy here. So he's gonna give me, now let's think about this because I only have one token left here in the bag. So I'm not gonna be able to go a whole nother round against this guy. Um, hmm. So yeah, let's go ahead and outmaneuver this guy. He's just gonna give me a one token. I'm not gonna be able to draw it, but it'll give me for future use. And then I'm actually gonna spend these, unfortunately, I'm gonna put all of those up there and this will destroy this section. So those all come over here. Um, yep. And so now this guy is stunned. This guy is stunned. So this guy's hitting me for two, one, two. I have to remove two tokens. So let's remove the other E and I need to save my maneuvers. I don't need my energies anymore. So we'll chuck that one there. All right, so now these all come back to me. These are all gonna get shuffled back into the top. Okay, slapped on top there. I get one more skill card. Um, I think we're gonna do Lucky Red Jacket here. Targets require one less laser for the round. This advances to warp three. And this section is now completely, I've blown that arm off. So I don't need to worry about that arm anymore. Um, obviously I'm going to need to address my shields here at the beginning, but let's deal out four more minions. Okay. And draw five more tokens. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, um, let's see here. I definitely want to try and make some work progress on this guy. So I'm going to do that. No, I think I'm actually going to just do that for now. Do this here. This is going to allow me to draw three more tokens out of the bag. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna stun this guy. So now I can officially get out of the way of this guy here. So he's gone. And he was giving me a single energy to my bag. I now have one, two, three, four. So I need one more token in my bag. And I know I can do that with both of these. So let's put, um, yeah, this towards it. So this guy is defeated. I can get another one cost energy. And I wanna spend this towards this. So I get one, two, three, four energy back. And these two guys, I'm gonna put here yeah, let's just, yeah, I might as well put those there. So now he's stunned. Okay, so I actually am making it through this round without taking any damage, which is nice. So um, moving on to the next round, I need to draw, and I should have exactly five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no. Okay. Hmm. I need to get some maneuvers here. Okay, so this guy 
I feel like needs to be my focus. If I can get what I want to be able to do is destroy him and get a token in here that I want. Um, or evade this guy, but that's not going to happen. Um, requires one less laser to destroy this turn. Minimum of one. I could get an E token in there, but an E token is not going to help me. I really just need one more laser to be able to take this guy out. Um, hmm. So let's see here. I can spend three energy here in order to buy a three cost laser. I'm going to put that into my bag. Okay. <clears throat> and these guys technically aren't stunned right now. So, oh no, don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Different turn, these guys are no longer stunned. And this is the guy I need to defeat. Hmm. So this moves up here, so I actually do need to put this on here just so this guy doesn't hit me. So it's going to give me an E token into my bag. Then, what can I do with the rest of these? Um, cannot be stunned by lasers. And right now he's taking... I would need seven to destroy him. So this guy's probably going to hit me. Um, and so is that guy up there. Because I have no way of evading these guys. Um... Let's see, choose one token from your pool and remove it from the game. Gain one token from the supply. So I can spend that. I can remove this from the game and gain one token from the supply. I'm going to gain this P token here. And what that's going to allow me to do is stun... I could either stun both of these guys. Oh, you know what? These are level one enemies. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This guy is a level two. So I could actually activate Lucky Red Jacket. Knock this guy out. All right, so I don't get this token anymore. Knock this guy out, which is going to allow me to draw three here. I only have two. My E's not doing me any good. Oh, and unfortunately, I'm only going to be able to stun this guy. I'm not going to be able to take him out and get even just one more laser. Okay. So I think I have officially been killed, though. Because at this point, this guy's going to hit me for three. One, two, three. And this guy's going to hit me for two, one, two. So there you have it. Um, that was not the best showing in the world, but at least it showed you how the game plays. It showed you somebody who plays a little bit differently than the ones who you saw in all the demo versions of the game. Um, and the basics of the game, the way the game plays, is all the same. So essentially you're playing these tokens. You can stun them with lasers. You can stun them with maneuvers. Once you've accumulated the total that's at the top here, you've defeated them and you gain the bonus underneath. And this is all a bag builder. You know, it's similar to a, a deck builder, but it's a bag builder. You're adding these tokens to the bag. Um, and the more tokens you have in the bag, the longer into each round you're going to make it, eventually um, making it so you can take out the boss. So this guy was definitely interesting because he gave me a fifth person that I had to address Normally there's four ships out here, and as long as I get four tokens that I can use to stun with, but when you start getting energies out here, it makes it much more difficult, things like that. So this guy's only difficulty two, but um, definitely, I guess, I went about playing him uh, the wrong way. So there you have it. Uh, if you enjoyed this playthrough, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.